Welcome to lecture 8 of video course on tribology. Today's topic is wear mechanisms. We started wear topic to lectures previous to this. Started with abrasive wear, then adhesive wear, and we will be continuing today adhesive wear, few slides on adhesive wear, and in addition to that, we will be covering corrosive wear and erosive wear. First, rise to that some guidelines and some observation which uh, we gain through adhesive wear mechanisms. If we follow those guidelines, we will be serving to the nation, we will be able to save the cost and enhance or we say increase the life of components. So, first guideline says that for a longer service life or reliability, if you are really aiming for a longer service life or reliability of machine, always aim for the mild resume wear. In this case, mild resume means a wear particles which are coming out of uh, material or uh, surfaces need to be much smaller in size, lesser than 1 micron. If the we are talking about the macro level, of course, if we talk about the micro component or nano components and the wear rate also the particle size will decrease in that same order. To do that, what is suggestion is comes at uh, dissimilar material, choose always dissimilar material which have a laser adhesion capabilities. So, wear rate will be lesser compared to similar materials. And another one says that choose higher hardness. Of course, hardness does not mean that you go to very high hardness where the brittle fracture occurs is own like in ceramics, but hardness where further work hardening is not possible to that level. We reach to a level where the further no work hardening is possible that kind of hardness is sufficient to reduce the wear or uh, to bring the components in mild wear domain. If we follow this, I am sure that component life will increase. In addition to that, there are two other guidelines. They say uh, severe wear behavior cannot be avoided. If we know that severe wear cannot be avoided, uh, application is like that, like a cement industry. We know the particles will be there, there will be some uh, velocity and they will uh, wear the uh, surface or high temperature. In those situations, we need to think about the routine maintenance to increase the life of component. Here I can uh, cut one good example of the roller bearing, maybe say large size roller bearing, where the inner ring, outer ring, rollers and cage everything is separate, they are assembled at the time of publication. Interestingly, outer ring is subjected to localized stress concentrations. Obviously, that applied load will be very, very in, uh, or the very low area or uh, almost micron size uh, area. So, there will be localized wear and there is no relative motion or relative velocity compared to the absolute uh, frame. So, in that situation, what we can do? We can uh, rotate that outer ring by a few degrees after a few hours of operation. That means, if we bring some maintenance strategy, we rotate outer ring, we can increase the life of component or life of the outer ring by 4 times or 5 times or 6 times, depends on the which strategy we are going to opt. We have one case study which uh, on the roller bearing itself, which will be covered in our next lecture, where we will show by rotation of the outer ring we are able to save life or uh, increase the bearing life by 4 times. So, wherever the severe wear is there, we should use some maintenance strategy, some additional aspect, not only the mechanism side, but uh, operational side that will enhance the life of component. And the last guideline says that um, try to load component below their transition limit. 
the transition limit we know the transition limit comes from the load point of view beyond certain load there will be jump in wear rate which was shown in uh, previous lecture one of the slide. Well, in this case we are talking about the temperature polymers or plastic or elastomers they change their behavior with the temperature. Of course, all the material change the behavior with temperature, but polymers are more sensitive compared to metals compared to ceramics. So, we are emphasizing on the plastic in this case. So, that try to avoid uh, uh, try to think that it should not reach to the transition limit or beyond transition limit to try to keep it in mild domain keep it below transition temperature below transition load in this case. To give some uh, exposure to the experimental data let us take one example and this example what we are uh, aiming to find the best material for dry journal bearing we are assuming there is no lubrication or if there is a lubrication that is by material its own we are not providing a third substance there are only two substance material 1 and material 2 we are not providing any additional third substance on that. So, for dry journal bearing few tests were conducted then there is a those tests were conducted on a pin on disc machine a commonly used machine disc material which is generally stronger does not wear out very fast is 1040 steel and while pin material we have selected 5 materials material A is uh, having hardness Brunel hardness 2 to 5 material B has a hardness 30 material C 50 BHN D 70 Brunel hardness and E as a 100. So, there are 5 materials and some experiments were conducted on that and we are saying that again find the best material based on the following experimental results and these are the experimental results we say that we have performed 3 experiments on the material A, 2 experiments on material B, 1, 1 uh, each on C and C, D and E material. You can see the parameter which was selected as an input parameter in uh, first test rpm was selected as 30 rpm rotational speed of disc as a 30 rpm and applied load contact load is 100 newton a schematic of this uh, pin on disc machine is shown over here you can see this is a pin a smaller size compared to the disc and disc material is steel this pin can be material a material b material c material d material e any one of this and applied load w is varying in this following order say so that for first stage is a 100 newton for second and third is a 200 newton for fourth fifth and sixth it is a 100 newton 7 200 8 100 so it doesn't show any order as such so these tests were performed arbitrarily and uh, in addition to that there is a column which shows what is the time duration of experiments which were performed at the interface between the uh, interface of pin and disc. So, in first case we operated almost for the 6 hours, second 100 minutes, third almost 1 hour, similarly fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh they were operated for 480 minutes is 8 hours operation and last one for the 4 hours operation what we gain as output output comes as a wear scar this is also shown on this pin the wear scar which is generated at the hemispherical pin after removal of this portion lower portion this pin will be flat at that portion and if we expose this pin for slightly more time slowly slowly the d will continuously increase and that is also shown over here when the minute uh, we are operating the material A for 350 minutes where scar is almost 9.7 when we are operating at the 100 
the wear scar is 8.81, it is reduction. However, load has been increased two times, right. So, increase in the load and decrease in the time, both factor will work and finally, resistance comes as a 8.81. In third case, we are increasing the speed to the two times from 30 to 60 rpm and keeping the contact load the same, but duration is decreased. But even in this case, where scar is an increase, that means this indicates clearly there is a some sort of transition domain. We increase the rotational speed, we have increased the load and it is jumping in some transitional uh, uh, regime or is crossing the transition it is going to the from mild wear to severe wear. So, this kind of experiments help us to find out whether the mild wear or severe wear is dominating. Similarly, there are other experiments what we find minimum value of the D is around 8.81 and maximum value of the D is 20.83 mm. Keep in mind that this D is smaller than R even though sketch does not show that, but by and large D need to be smaller than radius R or uh, radius of hemisphere. If we take that approximation, what we can find out the wear volume famous we are assuming the surface is smoother and portion below this line whole portion of pin has been removed as a may be in a it has been transferred to the disc or uh, the loose particle depends. This wear volume can be figured out or can be determining using this relation. This has a unit of uh, mm cube or meter cube. If we use this relation and we try to find out what will be the wear constant because in this case speed is varying, time is varying and load is varying. And if we are figure are able to figure out what will be the wear constant that can tell us whether pin whatever the material we are choosing it is suitable or not. So, in this case what uh, the, this slide concludes that uh, maximum D or maximum scar width is a 20.83 and the minimum is a 8.81. Now, we use the formula what we have derived earlier for the adhesive wear say that V is equal to total volume. In this case, uh, total volume is also given in terms of sliding distance. Once uh, we calculate this total volume, we need to find out what was the sliding distance and that sliding distance itself can be determined based on the sliding speed and total time taken for the test or test duration. So, L will be known to us, W is known to us, Brunel hardness is known to us. In this case, D we have measured from experiments and R may be unknown to us can be assumed, but when we equalize this expression R can be removed or we can take that as a one constant. So, by equating these two expression we are getting this relation. Now, here R is unknown to us and pi is constant. 3 is constant. So, I am assuming that instead of k 1, I will assume a new constant k 1, 2, 3, 4, phi is some, some expression. It depends on the wear depth or the wear scar depth or is a length in this case width also, h, time, speed and load. As we are just going to compare absolute value of k does not mean much to us, it is only the comparative value which we need to find. So, in that case that is why the we are avoiding using substituting the value of r. If we do that and in addition we are not expressing h uh, in terms of a uh, Newton per uh, meter square. Here we are giving itself in a uh, in terms of Brunel hardness. Constant will be by and large same even though there is a some change a slight change when we use a wicker hardness or Rockwell hardness but by and large will remain same. The whatever the constant of multiplication factor that can be accounted as a part of constant itself. That is why we are expressing unit as it is. This is a wear constant it may not be dimensionless in this case because uh, 
we are expressing in terms of Brunel harness. So, what we are getting from this relation, uh, this is already given, we are substituting this value and what we get fr from uh, this equation is something like this constant k 1 2 3 4 5 is 1.8971 or maybe say approximately 1.9 for test 1. It is increased for test 2. So, this clearly says there is a transition, it is not remaining constant from 1.9 to 1.2.3 uh, uh, is increased from 1.9 to 2.3, there is a substantial change. However, for thus test it comes around 20.5, a substantial, substantial jump. That means, this component was working in the mild domain initially and has reached to the transition domain and finally, it is in severe domain or regime is severe in this case. However, when we see the material B which has a relatively low hardness, what we are getting we are constant as a 0.53 and 0.56. This may be a slight numerical uh, calculation or substitutions. So, we are maybe some, uh, some experimental errors. So, this can be relied. We say that this material has a consistent performance even though it was uh, working for the, from uh, one condition 30 rpm, second condition uh, 600 and we have not changed from a load from 100 to 200, to, uh, 200 but it is we, we are keeping same as 100. So, a speed increase in a speed is not affecting this material. Similarly, for some other material we are getting this results. However, I can say these results are not sufficient results to conclude which material will be good. Because if we want to see the transition domain, we want to operate it in a severe domain or we want to see what will be the severe uh, the, uh, boundary, then we need to perform more number of experiments. Reason being there is more uh, statistical parameter and we need to perform at least 3 to 4 experiments to just something. However, with the present results, we can conclude that material B is a better option compared to all other. I would say that bitter B is the best among 5 materials. This is a just uh, um, example, hypothetical example how to proceed, how to judge which material will be a good material, will be material will be preferable material. However, for conclusion, for definite conclusion, we need to perform number of experiments. The, the topic will be dealt when we start a lecture on measurements. So, now what we could uh, judge from the previous slide is that there is a mild wear and there is a severe wear and we this slide shows uh, few points on the mild wear. We say that in mild wear we are getting small wear fragments, small in the sense uh, the dimension of the particle is much much smaller than dimension of component. Again, another point comes is uh, mostly these particles are metal oxides, they are not pure metal, material which get oxidized that is coming out. Or in other word, to reduce the friction, we allow exposure of material to the environment, so that it can form some oxide, reduce the shear strength of the interface, reduce the friction coefficient. In that case, we are saying that that also leads to the initiate wear, where the wear is mild domain or maybe say ultra mild also. When the wear uh, particle size is almost 10 nanometer, we do not count that as a wear, it, it, it is a ultra mild uh, wear. However, if it comes out of comes roughly 1 micron and uh, out of 1 micron uh, volume uh, size, we know the major part will be the oxide. So, material removal rate as such is not very dominant. So, that is tolerable if you are trying to design some component for the 5 years, 7 years this kind of a mild domain will work very well. Now, what are the characteristics? We are saying that applying low pressure, uh, applied load is relatively low that is why the conduct pressure is low and it is always a below transition limit, it is not even touching the transition limit. Whenever we open uh, particularly um, uh, ferrous related component, we can find out uh, some black color, uh, black uh, powder or black color powder mostly the iron oxide which will come out because iron has a natural tendency to form oxides in environment. So, 
to signify or to illustrate the mild uh, wear, we can give a generally uh, example of the iron or the steel, which are most commonly used materials. They form mild, uh, they form oxide layer on the top of their surface, and that is slowly slowly wearing out and mild wear. However, if we increase the speed, sliding uh, speed is uh, sliding distance is increasing, that will lead to higher wear rate. But interesting thing is that if the sliding is the speed is increasing, there will be increase in a temperature. So, if there is increase in a temperature, there will be more chemical reactivity. If there is a more chemical reactivity, then there is a more formation of the oxide layer. So, removal of uh, oxide layer and formation of oxide layer will be a dynamic process. So, wear rate will not be enhanced as such from material point of view, but from oxide point of view, yes. It does not matter much to us if it remains below certain limit, we can go ahead with a higher speed till it reaches to a melting point or um, temperature which is going to change the microstructure of the surface uh, which is a uh, harmful for the overall system design. Now, another possibility is that if you apply a high load, material is getting changed or they are getting higher hardness and that in open air or in a environment, if it is uh, getting quenched, heat treated that is also uh, fine for us. We are increasing the load which is increasing the temperature and it is getting cool. So, the self heat treatment is happening its own that is also fine for us. All three domains or all three um, condition are favorable from a component design point of view. So, we can recommend this compared to the severe wear. There is a some sketch shown pin and uh, disc machine uh, sketch. We are here. We are using the word rider instead of the pin. And there is a small, uh, very very thin line showing the mild wear. That signifies a mild wear. If you see the cross section of the pin, which initially in the previous slide I say that it will be a more uh, uh, flat surface. It doesn't come to the flat surface. There are some uh, scratches. You can see these are scratches, but of course, uh, these scratch values are generally lesser than 1 micron. And this is a surface of disc, even though we know the uh, disc is a rigid and a stronger and having higher hardness, but uh, still at the micron level it gets scratches. So, maybe that when we do pin on disc machine uh, experiments, we should replace after maybe say a couple of thousand hours if the disc is uh, damaged. And this last uh, is not a very clear picture shows a uh, particles smaller size particles, they are generally very very smaller in size maybe I uh, say order of 1 micron or lesser than that. Now, coming from uh, uh, shifting from mild wear to the severe wear, what are the characteristics of severe wear? In this case, we are saying that if the load is increased, it is weakening the oxide layer. Obviously, that the load is increased and the surface is rough, the asperities will penetrate in the surface, will tear away the oxide layer and virgin material and nascent material will be exposed to the surface which is transferring the load it gives a more opportunity for the adhesive wear, more and more cold junction formation and if we introduce friction force, tangential force, wear rate will be very high. That is why you say that uh, there will be a cold junction formation and wear rate will increase by several hundred folds. Reason being oxide layer is lost, lubricant layer is lost, coefficient of friction is going to increase, wear rate is going to increase and particle which will come out from this mechanism will turn out to be more like a size in the range of 20 to 20, uh, 20 to 200 micron. The question comes, we were talking in the mild wear about 1 micron, now we are talking about the 20 micron plus in the severe wear, then where is the in between gap 
what happened to 2 micron, what happened to 5 micron, what happened to 10 micron. So, we generally keep them uh, this particle size in transition domain. We cannot conclude that it is a severe wear or it is a mild wear. If it continues for some time, um, uh, we can say yeah, it can be on the severe wear side or it can be on the mild wear side depend on the situation. If it is getting a natural powder of the wear out wearing out if the debris are acting as a uh, as a lubricant layer or some solid lubricant it will turn out to be in a mild uh, wear domain or otherwise if the particle size are continuously growing in a size it will be severe wear. So, we are keeping 1 to 20 micron size in a transition domain. Just to characterize a similar way the way we have done in previous slide you are showing then the pin and uh, disc machine sketch here you are able to see a thicker or wider line wider circle in the case that uh, there is a higher wear rate. And if I see the surface wear out surface of the rider we are able to find out yet yeah, there is a big ma major chunk which has been removed from the surface and there is a fragmentation it is a very very irregular surface and same thing because the material is lost from the surface quite possible it got deposited on the disc. You can see the very irregular surface here and this is scale is only uh, 127 uh, micron, but we are able to see in uh, some cases this uh, where scars are even greater than 127 microns. That is characterized that this is a severe wear component uh, will not sustain for longer and we need to replace that component if we want unstop operation of the machine. Otherwise, uh, sudden failure of the one component and will damage consequently other component by transferring their load to the other components and uh, there will be severe wear or uh, catastrophic failure of the machine itself. You can see here the particle size, particle size are showing uh, even the size greater than 254 microns few particles will be like that and average will be turning out to between 20 to 20 uh, 200 microns. A few particles are uh, even exceeding 200 micron size. If we keep removing more than 200 micron size particle from the surface naturally component dimensions will reduce and we will uh, get a uh, failure higher failure rate. Now, last slide on adhesive wear comes as a big bang we say that is a seizure. As a seizure occurs whenever there is a high temperature or very very high load. If I see the definition in dictionary what we find that is a seizure is a two bind or two fasten together. In other word this kind of uh, bonding between roller and the uh, ring happens this is the inner ring of taper roller bearing and the roller. You can see there is a addition bond is completely joining process the welding process and if it happens bearing is not going to operate it is not going to show its function it will be more like a solid element there will not be any relative motion. So, we need to shut down the machine and we need to completely replace the bearing we need to apply force to even separate this roller from the ring this is ultimate is a final mode of adhesive wear. Here there is another example shown the inner ring in two uh, the half of the inner ring of a bearing ring rollers you can see there are um, material being being plugged uh, plugged out of the inner ring. There are uh, patches and parallel patches that means these rollers were spaced otherwise we should get a continuous uh, continuous layer of uh, this material removal, but we know rollers are generally capped in a cages and they are equally spaced that is why we are getting equally spaced uh, patches on the uh, outer surface of inner ring. This material uh, was attached to the surface and then some force was applied to remove and after removal rollers also look like this they have a loss of material reduction in dimension and can be reused unless they are reconditioned, recoated one way or another way. What are the causes for uh, this? We say that there are number of possibilities. 
heat generation is high, a coefficient of friction is high, heat generation is high and system does not have a capabilities to dissipate that heat to transfer that heat to the environment. If it does not have that capacity what will happen there will be a continuous increase in a temperature. Initially maybe say the 40 degree centigrade at the room temperature after started operation it will reach to 50 then 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 and there is no limit it may reach to the 700, 800 and if it happens naturally material will start flowing and the welding process will occur that will be hot welding in this case. That means, we have not designed the system properly, we have not designed the system from dissipation capabilities. However, there is another chance that lubrication was not proper, system was designed keeping in a mind that lubrication will work or lubricant will work, lubrication mechanism will be active, but maybe because of the power supply or pump failure lubricant was not delivered to the bearing surfaces or tribal surfaces. In that case what will happen there will be a uh, jump from uh, low coefficient of friction to high coefficient of friction. When you say in lubricated case we kept a coefficient of friction roughly a 0 0.05 and uh, lubricant is stopped getting delivered at the interface coefficient of friction increased to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Naturally, there is a substantial change in uh, heat generation maybe 6 time to 12 times and system which was designed with a low heat dissipant capability will not be able to tolerate that high coefficient of friction. In that case extreme addition will occur, seizure of component will occur. Similar thing happens also with a smaller clearance. If the clearance are not uh, done properly or the two components are not designed properly or maybe designed properly but not manufactured properly, the tolerance was changed. We want to keep a tolerance between two components uh, maybe say as a clearance rate as a 20 microns, but due to the improper uh, manufacturing they turn out to be only 5 microns. So, there is a huge difference between 20 micron clearance rate and 20 micron clearance rate that will cause excessive temperature, high friction, high friction and the sub subsequently the high temperature and that lead to the seizure. This is one of the most common error or one of the most common cause of failure what we call an installation error. If the components are not installed properly as assemblies are not fretted properly, if there is a misalignment and there is a misalignment there will be accessible load at the one side accessible load high stress concentration at that point will increase coefficient of friction significantly and that will lead to a high temperature which finally, stop the operation by seizure right. So, what we say observation there is accessible loading and heat which govern the seizure phenomena or accessible adhesive phenomena. We have uh, on one slide uh, on the wear map is a rigorous topic is a very extensive topic wear maps people have done lot of work and uh, the only drawback about the wear map is that it need to be for one particular material pair it can't be a generalized one. It has a number of merits uh, this wear map has a two axis we are saying the x, x axis is a velocity axis meter per second y axis is uh, unit pressure axis and the may expressed in mega Pascal and this wear map shows a kind of uh, wear happening at the interface. It does not separate abrasive wear, adhesive wear at the individual level, but it shows overall wear performance that is why the Archard equation is uh, satisfactory by and large abrasive wear equation and adhesive wear equation were by treated in similar manner there was a constant and that need to constant need to be determined and based on that constant we can plot results. Otherwise in the both the equation load was common W uh, was uh, uh, load was expressed by W hardness was expressed by H distance uh, H uh, soft hardness uh, material hardness of the softer material and sliding distance only the constant which uh, was in abrasive wear was a much higher value compared to the adhesive wear and this wear map 
represent only wear constant a combination of abrasive, adhesive, fretting, fatigue, corrosive all together. But this gives as a general idea how wear behavior will change. Think about this lower domain, there are some boundaries, the thick color, uh, thick black color, thin uh, line, thin black color lines. This shows that this complete boundary will have almost same wear rate. They can be figured out by using the equations. And uh, there are different domain, we are saying here ultra mild wear, always recommended. It does not cause much cost to us, component will survive for years and years and years. So, ultra mild wear should be recommended mostly for the um, micro industries or particularly the computers, hard disk drives we quote for the ultra mild wear. This shows that uh, initially the wear is in uh, influenced by the elastic deformation, but if the pressure is increased beyond certain limit there will be plastic deformation also can compare wear rate here is a somewhere by 10 is to minus 9 or wear coefficient is of 10 is to minus 9, which means after 10 is to 9 cycles the asperity will tear away or adhesive junction will tear away, which cause a fragment or will, will produce a particle. As a pressure is increased plastic uh, plasticity comes into picture where it is also increasing maybe say by 3, uh, uh, three orders. If we further increase uh, pressure, then it is coming uh, oxidational wear from ultra mild wear to the mild and slightly higher than mild. You can say medium wear, this is a mild, uh, mild oxidational wear, here the still material component, um, uh, metal component will be lesser than uh, oxidation component. Here the wear rates are 10 is to minus 5, 10 is to minus 4, the coefficients are 10 is to minus 4. If I compare this 10 is to minus 10 is to minus 4 with the 10 is to minus 9, we know component which is under this operating condition will see 10 is to 5 times more life, I would say 100,000 times more life compared to the component which is operating in this domain. If we keep on increasing the pressure, we reach to the finally seizure that means the load has increased significantly. That may be because of some failure of the pump which is uh, stopped uh, lubricating sub lubricant supply or uh, may have caused because of the improper uh, installation or some bearing failure which has tilted the shaft and cause a failure of the complete machine. This was related to the pressure. Now, if we continuously increase uh, speed or sliding speed, you can see the wear rate is as low as 10 is to minus 11. Here there is some sort of uh, load sharing happens because of the hydrodynamic action. With the increase in the velocity, we are able to get uh, some sort of levitation on uh, hydrodynamic film or aerodynamic films. So, that will reduce the wear constant, maybe 10 is to minus 9 to 10 is to minus 11. And second thing is that there is a more um, possibility of high oxidation oxide component is increasing compared to the metallic component, but in between there is a transition domain where the particle size may range between uh, 2 to 20 microns. High, velo high velocity and high pressure may cause a melting of material that is called a melt wear over here. Plastic deformation is there as well as the high temperature the flowability material will be there. So, it will act as a melting metal. Again high velocity and high pressure together will finally cause a seizure of components. So, if we have this kind of a wear map, we can choose which material will give a good results. If we know loading condition, if we know operating speed and we know which material we are using, we can figure, figure out what will be the overall life of that component. Is it is that uh, life is matching with our desired life. If it does not desire the life or is not uh, as uh, per our aims, we can change material, we can change a condition, we can change velocity, we can change load, we can transfer load from one component to other, we can bring two components. So, depends on the situation we can design system accordingly. 
So, that was uh, last slide on uh, adhesive wear of okay, course, last slide also in involves abrasion plus uh, corrosion plus uh, uh, fatigue, but that was uh, related to adhesive wear. Now, we are coming to the next mechanism that is a corrosion or is a corrosive wear. Interesting thing this uh, wear is caused by chemical reactions, starting point is a chemical nature. So, that chemical reaction plus mechanical action makes corrosive wear. If chemical action is missing only mechanical action we cannot say corrosive wear. If chemical like reaction is there, but there is no mechanical action we cannot say that there is a corrosive wear is a combination. And what are the corroding media? It can be anything, it can be lubricant also. Lubricant is uh, getting acidic, losing its basic characteristics, then it will act as a corrosive medium here, which has a moisture content, it can act as a corrosive medium. And some can sort of chemical uh, sulfuric acid or uh, acid which is formed after the reaction may be say sulfur dioxide gas was released from one chemical action reacted with the water got uh, formed a sulfuric acid and that sulfuric acid is acting with metal. So, this corrosion what are the problems with this corrosion uh, um, problem is the chemical action. To illustrate that we have, have taken example of one coupling the job uh, coupling connecting motor with a shaft and there is some magnetic bearing support. I took this example because I found in lab there is a some uh, brown color coming on the coupling initially it was completely black. The brownish color generally comes because of iron oxide and we know very well the couplings um, are made of the steel will be subjected to the atmospheric uh, reactions and some sort of uh, oxide layer will be formed on the surface. So, there is a brown layer. Um, oxide layer on the surface. What we can figure out that dimension of this brown layer is slightly long uh, larger than parent or initial uh, uh, dimension of the coupling. It swallows, it increases in dimension and the, the, this layer is also porous. If I rub this uh, coupling with a finger, I will be getting a uh, red oxide or uh, iron oxide on my finger and fingering this way that is we are doing some sort of mechanical action on that. If you do not do that this layer will not be separated its own unless there is a some sort of vibration some other mechanism. So, vibration itself is a mechanical action which is going to cause uh, detachment or um, removal of this layer because of that it has a, this layer is a brittle in a nature and um, is a porous in nature. So, we can say this is iron oxide if we rub this surface we will be getting this oxide on a rubbing surface. There are a couple of other examples you can see this is a inner ring of a one uh, roller bearing and this uh, ring has uh, some oxide uh, layer obviously there is some sort of uh, marks on the surface. These are the roller marks. That means, on the interface there was some sort of moisture or some water ingress in the oil that has caused this kind of uh, corrosion. Quite possible if the temperature increase where uh, rate of the corrosion will increase and then in that case we will be able to find out the some deep impression on the inner surface. However, if the corrosion is under limit in uh, ultra mild domain region, then we will not be able to lose much, there will be marks, but without cha much change in the dimension, those are tolerable. But many times, if the corrosion rate increases because of the temperature, because of excess of friction, or because of the excess of load, then that is uh, that need to be avoided, that need to be stopped. This is a corrosive wear of engine bearing, where the engine oil get acidic. And when oil itself or lubricating oil is acid is coming uh, completely in contact with the bearing surface. Naturally, 
there will be excess uh, corrosion wear and the bearing need to be replaced in the situation because the corrosion plus rubbing will change the dimension of uh, bearing and if the dimension of bearing change occurs then we need to replace it. Interesting thing about the corrosive wear is that the passivation that wear rate will continuously decrease. Yes. See this figure. We say that there is a time do, uh, time as a x axis and amount of the corrosion. We are talking amount of corrosion is not a corrosion rate, is a cumulative, is a summation from the zero time. This curve has initially some slope and the slope is continuously changing, it is getting curvature, and finally it will reach to steady state condition. That means it's getting passivated, is it will stop its own. We don't have to do anything. The same thing over here. If I rub this surface, again corrosion will happen, but if I do not rub, keep as it is, nothing is going to increase, we are late, uh, corrosion layer will not increase beyond certain limit, unless excessive vibration dislodges that from the surface or removes from the surface. Of course, as the layer grows, layer is already brittle and porous strength of the layer will continuously decrease. Now, we say that strength of this layer will be a function of thickness. With increase in the thickness, strength is going to decrease. So, we need to be careful about that. It should not happen that layer is continuously increasing and uh, generating number of particles from that. So, few points on this. We say that yeah, it goes in three stages. Sliding surface, first chemically interact with the environment. It can be humid or it can be acid or any industrial vapor or steam. Reaction product is uh, formed like uh, iron oxide, uh, chlorides or copper sulfide in the presence of different chemical like chemicals. If mechanical action is introduced, then there will be wearing away of reaction product film. This oxide film will be removed, sulfide film will be removed if there is a mechanical action reason being they are loosely attached if the thickness is beyond certain limit beyond critical limit. If that happens we can say that instead of following uh, this curve we need to follow this curve with the time corrosion rate is increasing continuously or we say that corrosion rate is constant, but uh, cumulative effect of the corrosion is continuously increasing is reaching to the monotonically increasing due to the maximum value whichever is allowable to us. So, if there is a mechanical action this curve will be followed, if there is no mechanical action this curve will be followed. There will be corrosion, but no wear while in this case there will be corrosion plus wear and wear is going to cause more and more corrosion. Now, one point to be noted is that this particle which are getting removed from the surface are an oxide may act as a abrasive material and finally, cause the damage of the mater uh, material due to the abrasive wear. As I mentioned in last lecture or previous lecture that abrasive abris wear failures are the maximum, wear occurred due to the abrasive wear are the maximum. Interestingly, adhesive wear also leads to the abrasive wear, corrosive wear also leads to the abrasive wear. The final destiny is the same, but initiation mechanism, initial mechanisms are different. Some observation related to the corrosion, I am saying that the thin corrosion layer may act as a protection. Interestingly, we know if material is a virgin is a nascent, no oxide layer on top of the surface, it will show very high coefficient of friction, high adhesion, high wear rate. But if there is a thin layer, maybe say order of 10 micron, then it may be attached firmly or weakly depends to the surface, but it will act as a friction reduction mechanism or as a other component or a material which reduces the friction and subsequently reduce the wear rate. So, one way if I understand corrosion mechanism. I can utilize it as a lubricant layer or I can say I can utilize corrosive wear mechanism to lubricate the surface, but problem it need to be controlled. If it goes out of control then 
thickness will grow and as a brittle material our oxides are brittle if the thickness is continuously increasing strength will keep on decreasing and there will be detachment from the surface. And if there is a detachment from the surface this porous layer will con get converted a number of particles and that will initiate abrasive wear which is not desirable. However, we many times we say that uh, if the layer itself is a soft material layer even after getting this loss from the parent surface it will get in a number of small particle, but softer in nature which can be easily shared. So, this soft material uh, porous layer will act as a lubricant layer even after getting detachment from the surface, but there are only few material which behave like that. There another point uh, has come that uh, at the high temperature we know the surface activity will continuously increase. If there is increase in the surface activity more and more formation of oxide layer will occur and if it is not continuously removed and removed from the interface itself then it may cause a high wear rate. One interesting thing is that we use additives in lubricant and one kind of the additives is extreme pressure additive. Extreme pressure itself is a misnomer it should be extreme temperature additives. What happened to um, uh, this additives when the temperature has increased beyond certain limit they turn out to be active and then they react with the surface, but in controllable fashion we will make a layer maybe say 5 micron to 10 micron on the surface and that will act as a lubricant layer. So, in other words EP additives can be used for the higher temperature application when we are operating machine components at the 200 to 300 to 400 degree centigrade through so the range somewhere in the 2 to 400 degree centigrade EP additives are going to help us. Typical example is a gear lubricants we use EP additives in gear lubricants we know the bulk temperature may be even 80 degree to 100 degree centigrade but at the interface this temperature may go much higher than that it may reach to 250 degree centigrade and ordinary lubricant will not work there it will not protect the surface. So, EP additives which make which corrode the surface I am using the word corrosion EP additives really corrode the surface, but we are happy they are acting as a sacrificial layer there is a layer formation and layer removal after certain duration after certain cycles but it will corrode damage the surface, but that damage is acceptable to us because it is going to help it is going to reduce the coefficient of friction and is going to reduce subsequent wear. If you do not use the EP additives there will be scuffing it will be adhesion or extra um, um, extreme adhesion and uh, gear will stop working there will not be any relative motion between the two gear uh, between the gear surfaces. So, we require EP additives in those situations which are fruitful to us. So, this is the same thing which uh, we said EP additives are required to enhance um, um, activity of the lubricant and react with the surface that is uh, helpful and uh, this is uh, what shown in this case as the thickness is continuously increasing under the pressure where it is also increasing there will be more and more wear rate. Now, we will come to the reservoir interesting this is where occurs with a solid particle as well as the liquid particle the liquid particle can erode the solid surface. So, that is where the definition comes you say that erosive wear caused by the impact of the particles particles may be solid may be liquid, but one definite thing is that they need to have velocity they need to have kinetic energy if there is no kinetic energy with the particles it will not cause any erosion. If I am able to divert the particles and bring the velocity to 0 to 0 kinetic energy there will not be any wear rate at least from the air, uh, erosion wear mechanism point of view. There are couple of uh, examples which are very are very very common say so that when um, helicopter passes through the dust or the some uh, height maybe say 1 kilometer to 2 kilometer height whether there is too much dust then what will happen in that case dust particle will impact on the gas turbine blades and cause erosive wear. Uh, suitable design need to be there to avoid this wear that is why we need to understand the mechanism. 
same thing happen if there is a slurry pump is used and uh, we know the slurry has uh, particles and there will be some velocity some kinetic energy will be given they will impact uh, an impeller and they may damage the surface that is why the most often we use keep changing the impeller after certain operating hours. We can say the erosive wear is a function of particle velocity because we know the kinetic energy depends on particle and this is a strong tendency. It depends on the impact angle, the angle which at which the particle is going to hit the surface. We know from the momentum uh, point of view that the, this angle will decide how much as energy is getting transformed, transferred from the particle to the solid surface. So, impacting angle is important for us and last says that what is the size of particle? Is it the low size or the high size? We know size is related to mass and mass is related to kinetic energy. So, overall mechanism is related to kinetic energy, particle velocity related to kinetic energy, but we say that strong dependence because it comes a v square, while the mass as um, uh, if we are assuming the spherical particle, then uh, this uh, 3 uh, power third comes with the d cube particle size will be proportional to the uh, d and then volume will be proportional to d cube. So, again the there is a severity, there is a strong dependence of the particle size. So, we say that particle size as well as uh, velocity they are strongly going to affect impact wear or amount of the wear while impacting angle uh, depends uh, which material we are using that will affect the impact wear or uh, erosive wear. This is equation generally given, so V is a wear rate there is a some constant we can say empirical constant or some probability how many after how long this particle will be detached. Uh, function A alpha which is a function of uh, impact angle, function I which is the function of velocity and mass which is a function of particle size. We will be detailing this, we will be discussing this in detail in our next lecture. We will continue reservoir in next lecture. Thanks. Mm -hmm.